This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. New Orleans is a city like no other in North America. The city rejoices in its long-standing traditions. Its multicultural population enjoys a shared sense of identity. New Orleans serves as an incubator for music, art, and new ways of living. Sitting on the edge of North America, the city has been destroyed and rebuilt. It celebrates the sensual, the religious, the mundane, and the fantastic simultaneously. Its food, music, and Mardi Gras represent its most valued commodities, produced as well as consumed by its people. Its sounds, words, sights, smells, lands, and waters form a unique amalgam. This urban space lies at the crossroads where North America's deep south meets the north coast of the Caribbean. Over the centuries, this intersection constituted a place where different cultures met and interacted. The cultural fusion occurring in this robust contact zone helped produce New Orleans' unique culture. The city stands as the only one of its kind in the United States, a melding of American, French, African, Spanish, and Caribbean influences. New Orleans' distinctive cultural blend often seems exceptional, with the city's culture not quite fitting into the contours of what it considered a truly American city. Popular culture generally depicts New Orleans as an exotic place romanticizing its history and people. Recent publications have named New Orleans the least American place in America and America's most foreign city. Just as the rest of the United States does not treat the city as a completely American space, neither does the city itself identify as such. As a primary example, the bustling tourist industry in New Orleans promotes the city as an exotic destination for U.S. travelers, a place offering American tourists a foreign experience without needing a passport. New Orleans does not offer easy answers to the questions it raises about its history, culture, and people. Instead, its answers remain complex and nuanced. Life just seems somehow different there. Perhaps this can be explained by how New Orleans appears to have resisted the forces of Americanization and has not made the same kind of shift assimilating into Anglo-America as other cities founded by the French. For example, the French founded Detroit, St. Louis, and New Orleans in the early 18th century. Yet, as opposed to New Orleans, the other two cities eventually blended into the American melting pot and became spaces where Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture took firm root. In addition, they developed into economic hubs crucial to the growth of the United States economy, especially relative to industry. New Orleans, however, never blended into that same melting pot as the city never completely shifted from being a French to an American urban space. In spite of the city's economic worth to the United States, with its location on the most important waterway in North America, New Orleans remains distinct and set apart from its surroundings. So while it serves as the southern gateway to the United States and functions as the primary port city of the Mississippi Delta, New Orleans still does not appear to be an actual U.S. city.